Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Welcome to our new podcast series, Data Movers. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO of JSA, along with my fabulous co host, Mr. Evan Christel, the top B2B social media influencer. Hey, Evan. How are you doing? Uh, were you into chat rooms in the 90s, like AOL chat rooms and all that kind of thing? Uh, a little. It kind of scared me. But if it was about my dog, then yes, I was there. Okay. Well, there's a new kind of social network on the scene. It's called Clubhouse, very LA. And it's an audio chat-based social network where you go and you meet people like you know, chat room style, but you're, you're talking and listening and learning. And it's the hottest thing now in and on sort of social media. I'm, I'm starting to see the buzz, people uh, announcing their new clubhouse group. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's really interesting. So tell me, is this like a, a response to um, Twitter and some of the other big techs uh, saying no to certain politicians lately and kicking them out, giving them boot? It's, it's, it seems to be more about people wanting that sort of human connection. And uh, it's not like a Facebook or Twitter and LinkedIn that's text or, you know, video based. It's all audio chat. So you go on and literally talk, you know, like to people like we used to do in the 80s. So it's rather a, a different approach. There's, there's no recording. There's no like content. It's just talking. And it's kind of a new phenomenon. And uh, in this day of um, lockdowns and bubbles, and people seem to really be into it. Yeah, and we're seeing podcasts obviously on the rise. So, um, you know, I think folks are really drawn to, uh, again, that human connection, hearing people, feeling their emotion through their words, not just seeing it on text or, um, you know, video that you might not necessarily be able to connect with. But um, yeah, I mean, the power of audio. Definitely, yeah, yeah, so the, the, the next uh, big thing. So speaking of uh, audio, we have a great guest today. We do. Uh, and, uh, you know, when we have conceived of Data Movers, I'll, I'll tell you, there were some key guests that we wanted just out of the gate um, because they, they did really personify uh, what, what we had in mind here with this podcast, which is to sit down with the most influential men and women of our industry really uh, the leading telcos and data centers supporting that network infrastructure. So I'm really excited about our next guest. Uh, please welcome Mr. Todd Cushing. He is the president of 1623 Farnham. Hey, Todd. Hey, how are you, Danny? Really good, thanks. Good. Have you have been a pleasure? Yeah, likewise. Welcome, Todd. Good to see you. Uh, I think you're in Omaha, Nebraska. Yes, sir. A little bit of snow going so on today and about 25 mile an hour winds. So beautiful outside. Oh, I, I love it. Well, I'm going to go right there. It's kind of my favorite uh, winter destination. But before we dive into your background, tell me a good Warren Buffett story. I'm sure you know Warren. You ran into him in the diner. Everyone knows everyone else in Omaha, right? Sure. War Warren uh, likes to eat at a place called Garotts. And he typically <laughs> likes to have a hot fudge sundae. And so he just, he, the, the rumor is he asked his doctor if he ate hot fudge sundaes or ate healthy, how much would it extend his life? And it was something like six months. And he's like, you know, hot fudge sundaes for me and a Coke. So, <laughs> but uh, I've literally been at lunch with people before. They were like, you know, we want to see where Warren likes to hang out. And we did it. And sure as heck, he came in and they put him behind the planner. So nobody hassles him. Had some people walk in that I didn't know who they were. Has his little lunch thing with those guys. And it's kind of private part of the restaurant. But that's Garotts is where he likes to have lunch in Omaha. That's great. Yeah, he's one of my business heroes. Seems like a wonderful guy, and he's not even on Reddit. So you know, what what a great uh, what a great individual. Um, so it, speaking of industries and investing, and it's been a tough year for many industries, but it seems like you guys at at sixteen twenty three Farnham have had uh, you know quite a year with some really important milestones and persevered against what's what's been a tough environment generally. You know, tell us more. I, I see some headlines here, like a $40 million expansion, uh, all kinds of, of, of good stuff. So give us some sure. insight, if you would. 
Yeah, for us, we, we were designated an essential facility right away. So having the access, because nobody knew how locked down things were going to get, that we had the paperwork, so if we needed to get back and forth. And we're an existing business, existing data center, so we're upgrading it to the $40 million phase one of the expansion. And we are able to keep the facility up and running, customers happy, and expand the electrical mechanical capabilities by eightfold from what it was before. So we'll have eight megawatts at the curb. It's uh, below ground transformers, sub subterranean. And they are, uh, the clients are watching us evolve. So a lot of them are very happy to see an investment happening in a facility that's been around for quite a while and right in the middle of the US and to see it taken to a new level of security, a new level of uh, infrastructure, just from a fiber standpoint, the vaults, the way that the the risers and the point of entries are managed is just, uh, it's, it's what it would be is it almost was a new build, um, though it's an existing. So a lot of times a remodel is a lot harder than a greenfield. So it's, it's a big deal for us to have it happen. And what we've also seen happen this year is the rise in remote hands and people wanting to not come on site. So they want to deploy and they want to ship a cabinet maybe partially full or have us just rack and sack for them, which we're doing a lot more than that that we've ever done before. And the traffic, the volume is, you know, podcasts, Zoom, uh, Microsoft meetings, team meetings, et cetera. There's a lot more volume coming through that our customers, the carriers have had to respond to. So we've seen a lot of expansion in that regard as well. Yeah, and we're definitely seeing it on our end too. The, tr the trends are, are really uh, insane. The demand for data center services and especially interconnection, huge rise, huge uptick there. What's responsible, do you think? You know, it's it's the people that weren't doing video, I think, or maybe weren't comfortable having a video conversation or even sending an invite for one. You know, so you'll see people kind of have an embarrassing moment at first when this first started. Now they're getting to be pros as you've had that interface with them. And we see it with clients that we talk to as well that are, hey, I need a, um, a bigger IX port. So I'm going to go from 10 gig or multiple 10 gigs to 100 gig because of that. So we've seen um, carriers bring in new routes as a result of that. So it's just the volume. It's the sheer size of data that people are trying to move files. They're trying to interconnect. It's the ecosystem. It's really not one thing. People have really got, so they're using cloud for this or enterprise typical for that. And they're, they're changing their, their mix around a little bit. And we've had some people who are just a normal contract and have said, hey, we're going to move from traditional enterprise cabinet to this, where we're going to go on to an on-ramp partner. And we're really going to the cloud. So we've seen that happen too. And it wasn't like they locked down or people couldn't access their systems to make those changes. People continue to evolve their technology. Yeah, you guys are the home to quite a unique internet peering hub, uh, Omaha IX exchange. So tell us the significance of having that in very close proximity to your data center. Sure. So IXs are not, they're still kind of mystifying to some people. A lot of people don't understand what an IX is. They're, they're European, they're in bigger cities, but for Omaha, uh, we're not Dallas, we're not Los Angeles. So people, people here in our, in our region, you know, had to have some education. We've had the content folks using it. So your Akamai or your, your carriers or your, your different um, people that wanted to share content to hyperscale, wanted to put some, some things out there. But for people to understand it has made it really evolve. And the IX was not owned by us. It was in our facility and it was called the Omaha IX, but it was owned by somebody else. So that group was a, a good friend, a good partner for us. And we were able to negotiate with them and say, hey, if you ever wanted to sell it, we'd sure be interested. So the time came around, they were interested and in, in, uh, we were ready and we made the purchase and now we're making some upgrades and some changes and then we've tethered off of our IX now, we're gonna tether some more. Uh, so there would be remote, almost satellite IXs off of the Omaha IX. But I think having uh, control of it, we were a little concerned that maybe from a carrier competition, because we're carrier neutral, it'd be a problem, but it really hasn't been a problem. It's been uh, a tertiary network that people can use for, to move data and connect on when they don't want to buy solid bandwidth that, you know, that they have to be accountable to. Yeah, I can tell you firsthand, you know, the beauty and the strength of the business model for the data center owners to also be managing those core interconnections and, and the peering fabric uh, all in-house. It actually uh, solves for a lot of problems. So I, I love that story. We also know that 1623 Farnham, just to skip away from Google's largest North American cloud node, 
as well as other hyperscalers and OTTs in the area. What has led them to Omaha? Why Omaha? I think the economic incentives that Nebraska had, it was always competitive between Omaha, well, really Nebraska and Iowa. Iowa is literally the Missouri River, which we're, you know, you practically were about three miles away from where their large site is. Google now has three sites within seven miles of us and they're gonna build another one in Lincoln. So they've got several hundred acres there. We, we think it's the economic development and the cost of power is a big one. The amount of telecom that crosses right through the middle of the US, the crosshairs are on Omaha. And then I think that the free cooling, I mentioned is a little chilly in Omaha. We're gonna be seeing like eight below real temp. Wind chills will be 25, 30 below. So you get 7,200 hours a year free cooling. So that doesn't hurt. So, you know, you can find a good environment and there's a lot of geeks. Uh, Strategic Air Command is in Omaha. A lot of large processing data centers, Mutual of Omaha. Fidelity has one here. Travelers has one here. First Data, which is Pfizer. A lot of enterprise data centers that grew a lot of geeks and then their kids are now working at these places, believe it or not. Um, so it's, it's fun to see how, how it's evolved, but it's a real strong communications. IT is a big deal in Omaha. Yeah, not just infrastructure. I mean, you're you're becoming quite a hotbed for innovation. All the action isn't just in, you know, LA and and San Francisco. I was reading about, you know, the new 5G lab there, uh, some some cool stuff has, happening from the National Science Foundation Ignite, US Ignite around augmented reality challenges and application building, the Facebook Reality Labs initiative. So you guys have a lot going on. Yeah, thank you. I, I think that augmented reality, most people recognize that's going to be a big deal. How much it's going to be a big deal is just fascinating. As we talk to our clients and what they're trying to achieve, it can be military, it could be medical, it can be marketing, it can be just interfacing the way we are now. Um, and, and, and entertainment, you know, is, is a big part of the gaming piece of it. So we have people literally will be in proximity of our, our building so they can have that exposure to the 5G. We've got a CRAN that's on our entire fourth floor is uh, Verizon. So they're, they basically, you know, there are CRANs in our facility. We've got a lot of 5G in Omaha. So for a city our size, I'm an Apple guy by, by nature. I'm sitting here with 5G on my phone. I've got a, a, a lucky enough to have it. My wife doesn't think so, but I do a antenna in my front yard. And so I've got 110 <laughs> fiber to that thing. And I know a lot more about it than probably my neighbors would want to know, but it's, uh, so I've got awesome response time. So it's, it's, uh, it, 5G and the augmented uh, reality challenge is, has been neat. Uh, Greg Elliott, who's been some on, on some social media stuff for us, is one of our salespeople. He's based out of Kansas City, and he's worked with Kansas City and Omaha to jointly uh, put together a resume of how we could compete uh, regionally with other regions, other areas, other cities. And the Chamber of Commerce here has been very much involved. We've had universities, uh, hospitals that are into AI. Uh, that have wanted to be part of it. So to see what I thought was a niche or maybe it wasn't maybe as mature uh, where they've got super maturity. These folks are creating, you know, organs and things in augmented reality. So it's amazing what they can do and share in the size of these files. And that gives us an insight to, again, it's not going to be just dark fiber and a network you're going to move these kind of files with. It's going to be 5G at that, at that, location and probably some dark fiber and other things in order to move that kind of file. You, you aren't gonna send 3D or holograms or things without being able to do that uh, type of bandwidth. Yeah, and, and to your earlier point, I love how the cool factor of augmented reality and this innovation, this technology is really you know, um, enticing our younger generation also to, to understand really the nuts and bolts of our infrastructure world. Um, and, and, uh, and hopefully we'll be attracting uh, fresh blood uh, to our industry because of all these new uh, cool um, reality challenges and, and, and innovation going on. Circling back to your experiences throughout your career, um, knowing what you know now, if you could go back in time and give us a piece of advice to your younger self at the beginning of your career, what would it be? You know, I think that uh, I would probably I would probably move around a little more. You know, I stayed at First Data for 20 years, and that was a long time. And it was operations, it was facilities, it was you know global. But 
it was a great place to be, but I would have been neat to maybe learn, be not so, maybe I was old school, you know, I'm 57. So back then I was like, stay, stay there. But it's like, I, uh, I think maybe I would have hopped around a little more. And, you know, it was funny as we worked in Asia or, you know, EMEA, there we were, people were moving around quite a bit. And I think I would do more of that myself. Yeah, good fun. It's always nice to change perspectives. So let's dive into a little bit of a rapid fire round. We'll go through some fun questions, fun insights uh, to share with the audience. Um, if you could have lunch with a famous person in history, who would it be and why? Probably either Steve Jobs or Henry Ford. They're pretty similar, but in different ways. But good they choices. Changed, they changed the world. They really did. One of those, probably, probably Steve Jobs. Yeah, I mean the, uh, the the insights alone would be worth uh, worth it. Um, you're obviously a pretty driven guy in 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 your work life, but what do you do to unwind? What do you what do you do for balance, hobbies or otherwise? Well, I'm seeing those boats behind you, and I'm a wood boat guy. So I've got a, a 59 lineman and a 54 century and a couple other toys. But it, I like wood boats. I'm a I'm a motorhead, so I like to work on motors and wood when I get a chance. So I'm a a member of the NT Classic Boat Boating Society, but I've been for over 20 years. But I like to uh, teach younger people about boats, mechanical things, stuff that was pre-electrical control. Um, so it's the alter, alter ego to what I do every day relative to, you know, managing a data center, running running those kind of things. But it's, uh, yeah, it's wood boats. That's fantastic. Well, send us a couple of pics we can share with this episode. I'm, I'm sure yeah. there are folks like me who'd love to, love to see it. Um, What's your favorite food? And I don't know much about cuisine in Omaha, but it, maybe it's an ice cream sundae with, with Warren Buffett or, you know, you know, it's something a little more exotic. Omaha <laughs> has some pretty good steaks, but my favorite uh, of course. my birthday, it was my birthday, my mom used to make a thing called ham loaf. And that's once a year, the family will put up with it. My wife will make it for me, <laughs> but it's ham loaf. <laughs> that sounds like the most Omaha, Nebraska dish ever. So yes, I, I, I can imagine ham loaf. Right now, um, movies, you know, we're all glued to our televisions with the pandemic. If you could watch one movie on repeat 24 hours straight, which one would it would it be? Well, the wood boat guy in me likes on Golden Pond. However, Alien <laughs> is probably my favorite. I thought the Those first are Alien the same. scared the heck out of me and it was awesome. So Alien. Uh, Alien's a good one. Then. Even, the, even the, whole, the whole series is, they did a good yep. job with all the... Uh, the success in successive movies. Well, look, thanks so much for joining us, Jamie. Yeah, thanks so much, Todd. It's always a pleasure to have you um, on JSA TV and, and particularly here on Data Movers. It's I got to learn so much more about you uh, and very fascinating. I love the, the wooden boats. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so if you enjoyed today's Data Movers podcast, be sure to check us out on jsa.net slash podcast for upcoming Data Movers episodes releasing every other week on Wednesday mornings. And, um, and also go ahead and check us out. <laughs> right, Evan? Yeah, follow us on Twitter at Jay Scotto and Evan Kerstell, and let's continue the conversation. Absolutely. Thanks everyone for listening in and happy networking. <laughs>